Good afternoon and welcome to the Grays of Westminster live stream. I'm Becky Denezi. You all know me. Lots of you have been already discussing our topic from today and I thought I would have a little read of the comments. I actually haven't finished reading them all but um, you're all making very valid points hopefully in our talk about what camera in the full frame range to go for. This was originally going to be a, a Z6 or D780 talk and then it morphed into or Z5, or Z7, or D850. So we're going to kind of talk about all of them um, as best as I possibly can and talk about the pros and cons and things like that. For those of you who are new here, please do subscribe. There is a button somewhere below, I think, and there's a, um, a bell icon. So if you click on that, you'll get notified when we go live. We usually go live on a Friday afternoon and then we upload videos periodically in between that. Um, I'm missing my co-host today. He is away. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you all by myself, just like the old days. <laughs> um, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, keep it together for that. So hello to everyone from all four corners of the globe. Um, had a mini tornado in New York last week, goodness me. It is very grey and miserable, that's why I've got the extra lights on to make me think that it's secretly sunny outside. <laughs> it's still August, why is it not warmer? I'm absolutely freezing. Do not forget, speaking of freezing, a nice hot latte, <laughs> or in my case a flat white, with oat milk is always appreciated. If you would like to contribute to the coffee fund, you can do so using the super chat icon. It's somewhere, it's down. Apparently it's down there. Um, if you're not watching this live, you can contribute using the PayPal me link, which will also be below. Uh, so let's get stuck in, shall we? Uh, if you are a DX user, you will probably have thought about going full frame at some point in the future. Someone did ask a little bit earlier if I was going to talk about the benefits of DX. In this particular stream, I'm probably going to stick to the benefits of FX, but you know me, I just throw stuff in there randomly, so um, I may talk about DX a little bit. Uh, but the primary focus is on if you're wanting to move up to full frame or if you've, maybe you've started using full frame cameras, a lot of you are already FX users and I wanted to, I get the very regular question of uh, what camera should I buy next or, you know, do I need to upgrade? I did a live stream, uh, pfft, couple of months ago now on the subject of whether or not you should upgrade and I was arguing against upgrading actually um so I'm I'm it's always at my lower left thanks Sam <laughs> left that way okay good um it's very weird because the screen is also reversed and that just throws me off so um one of the things that I would say is it will depend, of course, on budget and also if your equipment is actually lacking somewhere. If you think that your equipment is fine for what you need it for, why upgrade? There's no need to upgrade. If it isn't broke, don't fix it, right? But sometimes we need to upgrade in order to try and get certain shots that we otherwise couldn't get. Um, I know certain pro photographers who, for example, wouldn't have been able to get a shot with one camera, which when they upgrade, they now can. So there's always that element of it. And also, sometimes it just stops us from stagnating. I will, I plan to do an extensive live stream on the creativity of photography and stopping yourself from stagnating. Because in all kind of creative outlets, we do get stuck sometimes. So, but that aside, a lot of people look at upgrading just because they want something new and shiny and there is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no shame here. Uh, William says he got the D700 and D7000. Yeah, so those are those are good uh, side by sides. And Z6 suits Ian just fine but kept his D500 for wildlife. Yeah, I'll talk about the crop factor as well. Um, can cover everything you need with D3S, D700 and D750. Paul, yes, that's right. Don't, don't get rid of the old stuff unless you have to. Absolutely don't. Um, um, and it's just scrolling back up. I did see a few people that like Dennis is going to take his D500 and D810 to the grave with him. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and there were arguments for and against the new glass. So I'll talk about that. Let's start with lenses, because that is kind of actually the deciding point, I think, for most people. If you're a DX user and you have DX lenses, uh, then when you go full frame, you can still use your DX lenses on your full frame body. But as I think I've mentioned a few times before, you will get a crop factor. If you're using a Z camera and the FTZ with the DX lens, you cannot turn off the crop factor. So you will actually just get a crop of the full field of view. 
not the end of the world, but depending on how much rev resolution you have in your camera natively, you may end up dropping to a lower pixel count than you would have if you just used a native DX body. So that's something to bear in mind. I'm gonna repeat that for anyone that's not paying attention. <laughs> so if you have a DX lens and you put it on an FX body, you can use it full frame on these bigger DSLRs. If you put it on a Z camera, it will crop automatically and you cannot turn that off, whereas you can turn it off in the DSLRs. What might happen if you've got a not very high resolution FX camera is the crop factor will end up with fewer megapixels than if you were just using a native DX camera. Uh, case in point, D780, D750, when you crop that down, it drops to below 12, it's about 12 megapixels, it's actually slightly smaller than 12 megapixels, whereas a native DX camera these days, they're all 20 or 24 megapixels. So. If, you, if you've got DX lenses and you're planning to keep them, I'd say don't necessarily look at a full-frame camera at this point. It, there's not really much point in putting DX glass on a beautiful full-frame body. If you've got a D850, it will drop down to about 24 megapixels. So that's similar to what the, the 780 and the 750 are, and the 610 and 600. Um, so that's, that's not quite so bad. But not everybody wants to buy a D850 and then put DX glass on it, understandably. Lots of comments coming in, goodness me. Just upgraded from the five-year-old D750 to a D850. Thanks, Norm, for that tip. I'll look at that when I've got the mental brain bandwidth for, <laughs> for that. Uh, when film is no more, I will dig up my D700 from the camera bag. Um, Michael, you just need to refresh. I don't know, maybe someone can tell him to refresh and he will have sound because everyone else has got sound. Uh, right, so that's if you've got DX lenses. Now, if you're planning to upgrade your lenses anyway to full frame, because you're going full frame and you're thinking, well, I've got all these DX lenses and I'm going to go full frame at some point. Um, we always say start with the lenses. So if you don't plan to change your body right now and you just want to upgrade your lenses, you can bit by bit change them to FX lenses and then when you do change body, it won't be as expensive a transition for you. However, if you're planning to kind of jump whole hog into full frame, get rid of your DX lenses and you're wondering what body to choose, Quite frankly, there's nothing um, putting you off getting a Z camera because if you're going to buy new lenses anyway, then why not buy Z lenses, if you see what I mean. So in terms of budgeting and things like that, although the selection of Z lenses is a little bit smaller, for the most part, it covers a very extensive range. And as someone mentioned earlier, um, the FTZ kind of helps a little bit with the transition. So if you do have lenses you want to hang on to and you want to use, you can pop them on the FTZ. Con and I did a video, we filmed it a little while back, but we uploaded it last week, uh, where I did an awful lot of talking. <laughs> Con was just my arm candy. Um, but I was talking about the fact that um, if you've got AF lenses, they don't autofocus on the Z cameras. That's worth repeating because a lot of people ask me this question. I'm pretty much every other day I get that question, so it's worth repeating. If you've got older autofocus lenses, they will not autofocus with the FTZ on the Z cameras. If you've got older lenses and you're using them on the newer bodies of uh, the DSLR, you've got no problems. They will work totally fine. In our video on an homage to the D850, uh, Constantine was mentioning how he'd had to change some of his old lenses anyway. Even though they were full frame, he still had to change them for his D850 because he's doing sort of fine art, beauty and studio work and the sharpest quality was what he needed. And he didn't want to spend lots of time post-processing removing chromatic aberration and things like that. So for him, even though he already had a full range of FX lenses, he then had to change his lenses again in order to use them successfully on the D850. So the D850 is kind of its whole, it's a whole beast in itself. Um, the 750 and the 780 are kind of a happy medium for most things. I used the 750 for a long, long time. Um, and as you will know, if you're a regular viewer, I use lenses going back to 19, I think my oldest lens is 1971 production. Um, and that's a 105 2.5 converted, uh, pre-AI converted to AI lens. And I used that on the D750, beautiful lens. I use that on my film cameras. I now do occasionally use it on my D850, but it's not, it's not as sharp as the 105 1.4e. It was also not over a thousand pounds. It was probably about 200 quid. Um, and it was very, very well worn. <laughs> 
so yeah, some of the older FX lenses do not resolve as well on high res bodies. You're quite right, Norm, exactly. I will delve a little bit more into that when I talk about the D850 specifically, but just generally speaking, lenses will perhaps sway your decision one way or another. So again, if you've got DX lenses, and you're not planning to change those, then probably stick with the DX format. There's nothing wrong with that. If you've got DX lenses and you're thinking of changing to FX, then that opens up the possibility of possibly going whole hog and opting for a Z camera, or slowly but surely upgrading your DX lenses to F mount lenses and then looking at DSLRs. So now let's talk about those. I can pretty much hand on heart promise you that if you know how to use your camera, you will not have one particular genre of photographer of photography unavailable to you. So if you are a wildlife photographer and you've heard people say, I can't use a Z camera for wildlife photography, it's a lie. <laughs> they are lying to you. Um, have a look when you get a spare moment, don't do it now, don't leave me. Um, but if you get a spare moment, have a little look at the um, Richie Talks videos. Richie is a uh, Nikon, uh, employee. He actually works at the Nikon school, which obviously has gone all online now, but he does his own series of YouTube videos. Um, I remember having a chat with him a while ago. He uses a Z7 for birds in flight. So if, and he knows what he's doing. So if you know how to use the cameras, there isn't, it isn't that one camera is going to not be able to get certain shots that another camera will be able to within a certain limit. If you don't know how to use your autofocus system, because the Z system is quite different in its autofocus to DSLRs, then yes, you might get a bit stuck. If you go for a D850 and you don't know how to use a D850, then you're probably not gonna get very good results. <laughs> That's just a given. But if you know how to use a camera and if you kind of are comfortable, if you've reached a kind of plateau with the camera that you've got at the moment and you want to jump up to the next level and you're worried that you might not be able to do a certain type of photography with one of these cameras, then worry not. Yes, John Hughes says Kingfishers. Rishi does Kingfishers with a Z7 and he uses the 500PF and the 200 to 500 5.6. I mean, those aren't even the biggest, most expensive lenses, but he's managed. He showed me some fantastic, last time I was at the Nikon school, which was quite a while ago, pre-lockdown, I think January I was there, and he was showing me pictures that he'd taken on his Z7 with the 500 PF at the time, absolutely phenomenal. Um, yes, William, I will talk about speed lights in a moment as well. Um, and thank you, Ian, for your contribution to the coffee fund. I did turn on my thing, but I didn't hear it, so sorry, but thank you very much for your contribution to the coffee fund. Anyone is welcome to contribute while I'm waffling on. You don't have to wait for me to take a breath because that will probably never happen. Uh, so that's um, if you're worried about using Z cameras for wildlife photography. I do know wildlife and sports photographers that have done those. And in fact, when the Z6 and Z7 came out, the Z7, some of you might remember, came out just a little bit before the Z6. I went on a training day with the Nikon school to a not so secret nuclear bunker. Um, and we had, uh, what are they called? Like stunt coordinators, stunt actors there. They were both martial arts trained. Um, a wonderful lady by the name of Phoebe Robinson Galvin, who I've since followed on Instagram avidly. She does the most incredible stunt stuff. Um, and they were jumping off walls and pretending to fight each other and all that kind of stuff. And I was using the Z6 and the Z7 that day and I didn't particularly miss any shots. Obviously, to a certain degree, they're staged because you're asking them to go, okay, I need you to run and then I need you to jump at this point and then you're gonna do a somersault or he's gonna you know, pretend to punch you in the face or whatever the, the scene was that we were setting up. So we knew what was gonna happen, which is slightly different to wildlife because you can never really predict what's gonna happen. But certainly in sports, that it's the movement is not so erratic that you can't use a Z camera for that. And I've shown you pictures of my bird photography with the Z6 when we were in lockdown. Um, I managed to use the auto tracking on this with quite a lot of success, taking pictures of very little birds. So I would say don't worry too much. If that's your primary concern, don't worry if you think that a Z camera can't keep up with wildlife um, because it certainly can. But there are some, I'd say personal preferences and perhaps some caveats. So obviously these cameras are bigger. You can probably see actually um, to a certain degree on the desk here that they're bigger. The D850 is not a light body. It is very heavy. And a lot of people will go for this because they want something bigger. 
I know it sounds bizarre, a lot of people trade in their cameras because they want to go smaller and lighter, but actually I know a number of photographers who say the grip on these little mirrors cameras is too small and that their finger falls off the edge like that. I just about don't have that problem. But if you're not comfortable with the camera, then you're less likely to use it. So the ergonomics is quite an important factor, even though it's perhaps secondary to the performance. We know that all of these cameras are really good, <laughs> so, so we don't have to worry about too much in terms of performance, but in terms of ergonomics, some people just don't like the layout of the Z cameras, and you know what? It does take some getting used to. I still find that I can shoot with a D850 or a 750 in my sleep with my eyes closed, whereas with a Z camera, it takes me a few seconds to remember that things are slightly different. I've used a Z6 enough now that I don't have that momentary sort of pause where I go, oh, with different cameras, something's in a different place. And it's also very natively Nikon. I think I um, confessed maybe early on that I used to have a Fuji camera. <laughs> Shh, <laughs> don't tell anyone. I used to have a Fuji X-T10 and I had an X-T20. And my biggest pet peeve was that I just couldn't find things when I wanted to very quickly get a shot. It was fine if you stuck it on aperture priority and if I had the little lens with the aperture ring on it, I could almost pretend that it was a Nikon. But when I was trying to go into menus or change settings, it used to drive me absolutely insane. So the Z cameras weren't out when I bought those. That's why <laughs> That's why I had them. Z cameras are now out. And um, to be honest, it's not very hard to transition from a DSLR to a Z body if you kind of know what you're doing. So, um, so ergonomics is one thing. There are extra things like the grip. You can put the grip on these and then it will make it bigger. If you don't want, yes, Gordon, I do. I will answer you in just a second. I uh, just don't think I have missed your comment. Um, I would say that if you don't want a bulky camera, then the Zs are worth looking at. The Z50 is very tiny, almost fits in your pocket. The Z5 with the new little pancake lens, which we did a video on a couple of weeks ago, is also really small. I carted that around with me in uh, town for a full weekend and it quite comfortably just fit in my handbag, in my coat pocket. Um, so the lens has a lot to do with it there. You cannot fit these in a pocket, I don't care what anyone says, unless you've got like a giant pocket. The D850 is not, I don't even know a lens that would be, maybe a 45 mil pancake. <laughs> if you put that on there, then you could <laughs> squeeze that into a very large pocket. Um, but I would say if you want something small, Look at the Z cameras. The lenses are also quite a bit lighter. Yes, we're limited on lens range again, but at the same time, the, the lenses are smaller than, than the uh, DSLR. So that's a factor to think of. Uh, I know, I don't really understand this. I remember, <laughs> I remember a wedding photographer that I dealt with a few years back saying that they had a D2X for show but the shots that they were using were all from their D90 because the D90 image quality for them was better. So um, I know exactly what you mean, Sam. Sometimes the bigger camera, it's like, it's a client mentality thing. They just want to feel <laughs> like the photographer knows what they're doing by carrying a massive camera around with them. Uh, so Gordon, you asked a question. I would have a look at anything by Steve Perry. That's his name, isn't it? I think so. Um, he is fantastic fantastic when it comes to uh, autofocus. He's actually just done a video series on the Z cameras and I believe he's just released a book. Go and check out his website um, on the ins and outs of the Z autofocus system. He's a genius. In fact, our earlier stream on the subject of autofocus modes for DSLRs and Z cameras, which I think was, was like smack bang in the middle of lockdown, probably May time, something like that. Um, that was, I, I referred to him a lot because he was super helpful when it came to putting that stream together. So hopefully that helps, Gordon. Um, exactly as John says, one good thing is the way the menus are almost exactly the same between the two, and they really are, which is very helpful. Uh, it's Woody, Z7 sure works for wildlife, but big gap in percentage success rate, especially clutter and active subjects, yeah. Two years experience, Z7 cannot match D850 on reliability, fleeting opportunities are too often fleeting. That is very fair enough. And if you've got the ability to use a DSLR for certain things and a Z camera for other things, then, then all the better. Um, but yes, certainly if you've got fleeting subjects. I remember also 
with very early iterations of the firmware in the Z cameras, the autofocus was quite slow in the Z7, and they sped it up throughout the firmware updates, basically by adding things like algorithms to work out faces and um, and tweaking a few bits and pieces, um, which definitely helped. We, as you probably know, we use Z6 for our recording. The autofocus doesn't have any problems keeping up with me. In fact, sometimes it recognizes my face almost too much and doesn't want to focus on other things. <laughs> So if it's faces or animals that you're after, then face detection can be very, very helpful. Uh, John, John says, company called Fortis makes a coat that you can fit a 24 to 70 in. Did you buy one for your wife, John? Is that what's happening to you? <laughs> this is how you know. I have a business proposition for your wife, John. I think that she should uh, get her own line of camera bag trolleys and we should call them John's wife or endorsed by John's wife because if you don't know, John's wife carries all his kit for him and I think that she's uh, she's onto a money maker there if she does that. <laughs> um, Norman Smith did a YouTube video on D850 focus technique. Yeah, uh, the DSLR focus technique, there is no shortage of videos um, out there at all, I would say. Zed's possibly slightly fewer, but Steve Perry is definitely by far, I think, the best. So, anyway, that's ergonomics. Um, in terms of flashes and studio work, let's just define these, these uh, slightly better for that. So, with the Zed cameras, you can use all of your speed lights, no problem. You don't have the ability on your speed lights, and I'm gonna do a stream on this one day, uh, on the subject of like flash and flash compatibility and stuff, but you don't have the ability to use the infrared autofocus assist on a speed light in conjunction with a Z camera. So a lot of people use um, use speed lights in order to help them focus in low light. It's called AF Illuminator, I believe, um, on the speed lights. You can't use that in conjunction with the Z system because it interferes with the way that the Z cameras actually autofocus. So that's that's probably a downside. I'd say that's a con on the side of um, the Z cameras. The DSLRs, obviously, all of your speed lights are completely compatible. No issues there. You can use them fully manually, and you can with the Zs going way back to SB16B. So if you really want to use an old, old, old flash, then you can on these. In terms of studios, um, so if you've got fixed studio lights and you're using PC sync sockets, then you need a pro body that has the flash sync socket on it, or you need an adapter for the hot shoe for these, for, for the D780, D750, smaller cameras, and the Z bodies. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, because <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm people. But if you do have a, um, a studio system where you do use that old school PC sync stock, a socket um, system with cables and things like that, the bigger bodies, that there's a slot right there for it. With the smaller bodies, you either have to get a hot shoe adapter, um, or you have to start looking at other ways to trigger your studio speed lights. Now, some people ask me, what do you do with the what you see is what you get view when you're shooting with flashes or studio? I think I've talked about this before, but I'm just gonna mention it again, just in case. Um, there is a way to turn off the live view preview. With these bodies, if you're in live view, then you just press the, uh, I'll just show you this way, you just press the okay button to turn your live view preview on and off. So basically exposure preview is normally on, on the back, if you want it off, then you press OK and it turns off. Super simple with all of these DSLRs. With Z cameras, it's a little bit more complicated. If, you, if you're if you shooting with flash, obviously, your shutter speeds are usually quite high. So when you dial in all those settings, your picture ends up completely black. And that's not going to help if you're trying to compose. Uh, so what you do instead is you go into the custom settings menu under shooting display and you change your option D8 apply settings to live view. That is how you turn it off basically. Once you turn off apply settings to live view, you can see what you're doing in the electronic viewfinder and on the back screen, but you can still use your speed lights and your studio lights without having a black image on the back. So there we go. Um, Andy says, what does Andy say? The flash AF illuminator is not as much of an issue as the Z Prime's Roll F1.8 and not F2.8. Yes, but you know, Andy, I know a lot of Z photographers who were quite upset with that discovery. <laughs> so, so it's not that big a problem, but ask Nick. We had a long discussion about this when, when he first switched over to Zs. Um, the Z lenses kill the F lenses. Yeah, so... Mm. So the lens performance, I will say, on, on the stuff that's coming out from Nikon for these cameras, 
does knock the socks off anything that we've seen before. Uh, even the kind of the cheap lenses, like the 24 to 50, the 24 to 200, it's an all-in-one lens. Quality-wise, they are on par with the pro lenses from the F-mount. I'm not going to compare the 2.8 high-spec S lenses with the non-S lenses because, to be honest, I haven't had enough time to do rigorous comparisons. But I will say that, for example, the 35 1.8 prime, the 51.8 prime on the Z body, the 24 to 70, even the F4, not just the 2.8, um, the 20mm 1.8, the 24 1.8, they are all better than their direct counterparts in the F mount system. Um, so go figure. There's obviously some mysterious magic going on with these lenses um, and that's certainly worth considering if you are changing your lenses do look at the Z system seriously. Um, some other, so so interesting, sorry, just to conclude, on the studio side of things, I would say it's not impossible to use your Z cameras. If you're like Sam and you've got pocket wizards, even better, you can use those with that. Um, but if you're a little bit old school and you want to use cables and things like that, I would say that DSLRs are probably slightly more comfortable to use in a studio environment. Simple as that. Um, as Norm says, basically he's agreeing with me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, now here's another pro, I would say, for the Z system. IBIS, in-body image stabilization. I've talked about this a few times. Um, you have multiple levels of body stabilization. It works in conjunction with the VR in your already existing lenses. So even if you've got an F-mount lens that has VR, then it will work in conjunction with the IBIS on the camera. If you've got a lens that doesn't have VR, then the IBIS still works beautifully. I the One of the reasons why I love the Z system is because manual focus lenses, like I have a 200 f4, I talked about it last week, plop that onto the FTZ and onto a Z6 and I have a VR lens that is 50 years old. <laughs> so, so it's pretty cool. You can do some very interesting things with having IBIS and you can use slower shutter speeds, which you might not otherwise be able to do. So that is definitely in its favor, I would say. I was quite surprised that they actually incorporated IBIS into the Z5. I expected that to be a stripped out, because they don't have it in the Z50, you see, but the lenses have VR in them, so that kind of makes up for it. But, um, but Nikon actually included IBIS in the Z5, and I was quite impressed that they did that. I thought it was very nice of them. Uh, in terms of low light performance, because that's always a question, I mean, we, we know we know about image quality, right? We know about pixels and the fact that if you've got lots and lots of pixels, you're gonna have a very densely packed sensor. That means that maybe the low light performance might not be as good as if you were using a camera with bigger pixels. We remember talking about that, I've talked about that a few times. So for example, a D850 side by side with a D780, the 780 is gonna be better in low light. The pixels are just bigger. And that's why the light absorption is better. Obviously, they have processors which also handle a lot of noise issues and things like that and turn the final image into what we're used to looking at. And I'd still say the D850 is awesome in low light. I use it quite happily at about 4,000 um, without too many complaints. But when I had the D750 for a long, long time, I was easily shooting at 6,400, 8,000 ISO. I wouldn't do that with the D850. The, the noise is very pleasing, but I'd still not do that um, if I could help it. Um, so in terms of low light performance, the processors in the Z cameras and the D780 are all the current generation. I think we're up to X speed six. Someone's gonna tell me whether I'm wrong or not, I'm sure. <laughs> D850 I believe is the generation before, so it's X speed five. That just means that low light performance is better in the Z7, the Z6, the Z5, and the D780 than it is in the D850. That doesn't mean that the D850 is bad in low light. It just means that if you are planning to push your ISO quite high, or if you need to, because sometimes you need the ISO even if you don't want it, if you know what I mean. Um, so just having this higher ISO range is super handy in these bodies, even if, you know, with the D850, maybe you could get away with it by using a slower shutter speed and a tripod. It's not an easy camera to use at slower shutter speeds without a tripod, I would say, um, but if you do need higher ISO performance, then have a look at the 780 or the Z cameras. They're all fab in low light. Will Nikon continue to produce? Oh, goodness, we've had some contributions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Eves. Thank you very much, Terry. That is very kind. I didn't miss anyone else, did I? No, okay, good. Thank you very, very much for your contributions to the Coffee Fund. Uh, will Nikon continue to produce DX mirrorless cameras and DX lenses? The Z50 is not a one-off as far as I know. I believe that they will 
continue to produce DX lenses, they have one more on the lens lineup and they may well do another body at some point in the future. I'm not a Nikon spokesperson, but I believe that that's the plan is to continue to develop the Z range. Uh, the F mount 70 to 200 2.8 is surpassed with the Z equivalents. Yes, I have heard that. I, I believe that to be true. I've shot side by side Z6 with D850 for studio work. Thank you, Garrett. Yeah, as a fellow Z6 D850 user, no problem once you remember the set, the D8 setting. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I've had both cameras synced up to my big old iMac at home, and sometimes I've now learned to label my files appropriately, but I do sometimes struggle to find the difference between the two because you can crop really aggressively with 24 megapixels. I mean, maybe people think you can't. I, I used to crop really aggressively with the D700, which is 12 megapixels, so there you go. Colin, Ivis is awesome, especially low light. Uh, drop the file size. I'm guessing that's referring to the pixel count. Yes, that's a good bit of advice. Pentax had Ibis 10 years ago. Cool. I think Sony did as well have it for a while. I mean, it's not new technology, but it is new for Nikon. So, you know, we're going to give credit where credit's due. <laughs> we now have Ibis in our cameras. Um, 780 and 76, uh, sorry, Z6 sensor are very close to D5, D6 in low light. That's good to know, Woody, actually. Um, I haven't done a comparison of the D6 yet. I haven't had a D6 other than a pre-production model. I haven't had a, a uh, an actual p production model in my hands of the D6. So one day when I get one, uh, I will do a little test with that. Uh, Graham was shooting at 10,000 ISO with a Z6 and the noise was minimal. That's brilliant. See, I shot uh, an entire an entire concert at about 10,000 ISO on the D750 and I had to do quite a lot of cleaning up after that. Um, but that was two processor generations ago, I believe. So this is, current processor is very, very capable at handling noise. Uh, any news on the Nikon XQD cards? I think that was just a vicious rumor. <laughs> I never, I never ever heard anything official from Nikon on the subject of XQD cards. I did hear that, that I think it got confused with the CF Express launch somehow. It was like Nikon were endorsing CF Express and then someone had made a picture online of a Nikon CF Express card, but it wasn't wasn't a thing, not as far as I know anyway. Um, hello, Ed. <laughs> you need to you need to look at the time, Ed. <laughs> not miss the beginning of my live streams. Remember to hit that bell icon. Right. <laughs> anyway, so we've talked about ISO, IBIS, Studio. You should see what my script looks like today. It's like a mess. So I'm just trying to make sure that I cover everything. Um, so now let's talk about specific pros for each model and cons. I'm going to mention some cons as well. So the D780, I would say, if you want to stick with DSLRs, first I'll talk about DSLRs and then I'll talk about Zs so that we can just split them up a little bit. So if you're planning to stick with the F mount, if I have not yet convinced you to go Z system, and that's totally fine because I use both, so I, I don't have anything against people sticking with the F mount system. It's still a fantastic system. If you're planning to stick with DSLRs, the D780, I would say, is ideal for low light performance. Um, it shoots seven frames per second, so it's not like insanely fast, like the D6 is 14 frames per second. But if you need that, then you need to start looking at different cameras um, for that particular speed. There's no way to particularly speed it up either. Whereas the D850, is also seven frames per second, but as I've talked about before, that very expensive system of putting in a D5 battery, D4 battery, uh, will get you up to nine frames per second. If you don't need those, don't worry. So 780 is seven frames per second. I would say better in low light than most. It does shoot the full 4K gamut that we need. So if you're planning to use video, then you can use it. One thing I will say, the D850, I've tried shooting some videos at home with it. Um, with having been used to the Z6 and spoiled by the Z6, I would say, and it's a bit, it's face recognition. The D850 is not great <laughs> for that. <laughs> um, it's very hit and miss, and because it doesn't have completely silent lenses, even even the little sound of an AFS motor going, Z -Z -Z -Z, you can hear it with an external mic. So um, I would not use the D850 unless your you've got a cameraman or a camera woman to actually camera person <laughs> to actually do the filming for you and pull focus and things like that autofocus with dslrs in video mode has always been a little bone of contention for the videographers the d780 
has a hybrid autofocus system. So it's actually in live view, got the same AF system as the Z6. And because of that, it works much better for video work as well as of course for general shooting. But if you're thinking, oh, I want a Z6 for the video, but I want to stick with a DSLR, 780, that's the simple answer. The D750 was not really amazing for video work. You pop it on a tripod, pre-focus, then don't touch it. Same with the D850. That's what I would suggest with those. If you are thinking of upgrading and you're not sure, look at the D780 for the video as well as for stills. And you've kind of got the best of both worlds. Um, so that's the DSLRs. The D850, obviously bigger file sizes. I've talked about this. 100 meg raw files, anyone? <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, very big raw files. Um, exceptional quality, of course, you can print to the size of a building if you want to. Um, it's got a nice big viewfinder. That's one thing that I always find a little bit frustrating with these is that the viewfinder it feels a bit cut down because it's got the uh, rectangular eyepiece, whereas the D850 has got the nice big viewfinder. Um, Otherwise, the features of these two cameras are quite similar, like things like the focus stacking um, and the negative digitizing and the um, there was something else that it did that I've forgotten now. <laughs> time lapse photography and the time lapse video mode, all of that stuff is the same between both of these cameras. So if you're not sure which one of these to go, it's do you want nice big file sizes with the D850 um, or do you want something that's maybe not so high resolution, but will pretty much otherwise do everything the D850 will do? I think that's nice and simple. The The AF system is different. This is 51 AF points, so it's the same number of points that we've been used to seeing in the good old, bad old days, but it's faster than the D750, and it's got that, as I say, hybrid AF system in live view. The D850 has 253 uh, autofocus points, I don't, or one, 251 or 253, anyway, it's got a lot, and <laughs> I've never ever had to use all those autofocus points. I'm a single point in the middle kind of gal. Um, so, those are the bodies. The I've talked about the cons of this one. I will also say, as I mentioned before, yeah, focus stacking in camera, exactly. I thought I said that, but maybe I didn't. Anyway, thank you, Andy. Focus stacking in camera, both of those have that, um, as does the Z7. So the frames per second is a little bit of a downside on the D850, I would say, um, because you have to spend all that extra money to get nine frames per second. The video, as I've mentioned, is, although you can shoot 4K, the autofocus of video is not very good. And also using your old lenses, I would say, is probably a downside because if you're not using the latest glass, um, then you won't get the best out of a D850. And as someone very ruefully complained to me the other day, why spend all the money on the camera when you've got to change all your lenses as well? Well, exactly. <laughs> Look at a D780. That was my answer to that. Thank you, Paul. And thank you, Gary. Thank you so much for your contribution to the coffee fund. That is very, very kind. Um, our local camera store has 64 gig Nikon XQD cards. Wow, maybe they don't sell them in the UK. I've not, I've literally never seen one. Um, and I, they're more expensive than the Sony's. <laughs> okay, I don't understand the point in that, but that's very interesting. Thank you, Johan, very helpful. D850 lossless compressed files are approximately 50 meg. Thank you, David, that's very um, specific. If you're looking at D850 14 bit raw, uncompressed files, you will find them to be closer to sort of 80, 90 meg. I've shot landscapes which have been 100. Depends on the dynamic range and the subject that you're taking pictures of. Okay, so that's DSLRs. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons, uh, or I would say pros, of the Z system. You've got IBIS, you've got better low light than most DSLRs, uh, D850, sorry, D780 being a bit of an exception. Not great for studio. In terms of the differences between the three sort of FX bodies. This was originally gonna be Z6 or Z7. It's now Z5, Z6 or Z7. So as I talked about a couple of weeks ago when we had that sample Z5 for a couple of hours, I was allowed to um, borrow it from Nikon. And we now have them in stock, so um, not an issue. Uh, one of these days I will get one out of the box and I will show you. <laughs> but the Z5 has pretty much everything that the Z6 has minus the frames per second. The Z5 is four frames per second, so quite slow. Um, it's got a slightly slower autofocus system um, and it doesn't have full full frame 4K. 
those are the biggest downsides. To be honest, everything else about the Z5 is lovely. Um, the Z6 is 12 frames per second up to, I think there's a small caveat of it will, it will actually squish the bit rate down a little bit if you shoot at 12 frames per second, but natively it's 10 frames per second. That's still very, very good. Uh, by far Z6 is the best camera for video work. If you are looking at a sort of hybrid um, stills and cine camera, then the Z6 is probably the answer. Uh, lenses, obviously I've talked about the performance of the lenses, excellent, it's very good. And if, you want, if you're looking at the D850 or the Z7, to be honest, side-by-side -side image quality, not going to make a difference. If you're using IBIS, obviously that will make a difference. Um, if you want something smaller and lighter, look at the Z7. Um, the battery life on the D850 is better, obviously it has two card slots, whereas the Z cameras have one card slot with the exception of the Z5, which has two SD card slots. I hope you're all taking notes. <laughs> Don't expect me to, uh, uh, I'm not gonna quiz you at the end of this. Uh, Garrett says, have recently tried focus stacking in camera on Z6 and Z, and sorry, and D850, great results with Helicon software. That's brilliant. I think when I first did my uh, focus stacking stream some weeks back, like three months ago now, it would have been, um, I also used both of those cameras and it's, it's really, quite rewarding actually. So the D780 also has that built into it. Um, Andy's saying there's a major difference with DSLRs, they have quiet mode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Z system has silent photography mode. Although, I will point out Andy that these newer bodies, the D850 and the D780 do also have completely silent shooting mode in live view. So that's not so much of a problem anymore. Obviously, if you wanna shoot through the viewfinder, the camera has to put the mirror up in order to take the picture. But if you're shooting in live view, then you can shoot silently on the D5, D500, uh, D850, D780, um, most cameras that have come out in the last couple of years. The Z5 does have IBIS nick. Yes, it does, which I was quite surprised about them including, and I'm glad that they did. EVF is fabulous when you're short-sighted for chimping. Yeah, it's true, actually. Keeping your eye up to the screen and zooming right in is very helpful. Silent on the Z6 is indispensable. I have to agree. Having shot weddings and concerts with a D4S, which sounds like a machine gun, um, having a silent photography mode is an absolute lifesaver. Brian says 139 pounds. Was that a donation to the coffee fund, Brian? <laughs> I missed what that was in relation to. Maybe that was in relation to some extra memory cards. Um, nope, no idea. Anyway, <laughs> cool. You might want to clarify that one. Uh, so that's some positives for the Z cameras, I would say. Uh, do, do, do. Nikon definitely announced XQD cards just after Lexar stopped it. I do remember it, but I just never saw them after that. Um, and I thought maybe it was a vicious rumor. If you update your cameras, do you see if Express you lose the XQD compatibility? That's a shame. Okay, I'm gonna do some investigation for you, Norm, because I did not, I don't believe that that's the case, but I will double check. I know that the card readers are different between the CF Express cards and the XQD cards, and I know that the D850 hasn't had the firmware update for the CF Express cards yet. I wonder if that's why, but I will I will look into that. Silent on Z6 has some issues uh, in LED light. Okay. Oh, some colors of LED light. Yeah, so there's also, interestingly enough, when you're focusing directly onto the sensor, you have to bear in mind that you are gonna have slightly different results to when you're using an optical viewfinder, which is basically a very bright piece of glass, looking at a mirror and then going through more glass. With this, it's, you're looking at the sensor, and when you're looking through the EVF, you're actually just getting a direct feed off the sensor and through the glass. So sometimes you do get different reactions. Um, yeah, Garrett, I will, as I say, I'm going to check on that, that Norm brought up the fact that CF Express cards don't work with XQD. Um, I don't think that's the case, but if it is, then I am shocked. <laughs> so anyway, I'll do some investigation and let you know. Um, yeah, Steve's got the latest firmware. I just, yeah. I didn't think that was the case, but maybe, maybe that's why they've delayed the DSLR firmware update for XQD cards. It's worth having a look at. Right, sorry, last thing, Z7 is nine frames per second, um, because I didn't mention the frames per second on that one. So, Z5, four frames per second. Z6, 12 frames per second. Z7, nine frames per second. And then these two are seven frames per second, but you can speed up the D850 by spending a lot of money. Um, <laughs> Right, so what I will mention is that the we, we have been obviously doing videos since, well, for about the last year and a bit, and 
over the period of lockdown, I did an awful lot of streams on a lot of subjects. So please do check those out. Um, if you want to see me in my home studio with a green screen, it's great fun. Um, we also had a much smaller group then, so it's a little bit more intimate. Um, and we have a lot of in-jokes. The, the sort of like die-hard original followers will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, but I did do a video on the D780. We did Constantine and I did a couple of months ago. So do check that one out if you're interested. That was like first impressions video. Um, D850, the live stream about two weeks ago is probably the most comprehensive video we've ever done on the subject of the D850. Um, on mirrorless, we've done quite a few features. Way, way, way back in the beginning, my very, very first live stream when I had no idea what I was doing was on the Z6. So <laughs> if that's of interest, go check that out. I think we used the webcam from our laptop and um, Fatini just basically put the computer in front of me and said, record, let's go, live. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> so um, if you're interested, you can check that one out. Or if you want a slightly more sort of rounded stream, a few weeks ago, I did uh, a mirrorless comparison stream. Um, that might be quite useful. That was just before the Z5 came out. And then again, a few weeks ago, we did the Z5 stream and we have just filmed an unboxing video and also a sort of mini review. I took the Z5 out for a weekend. I actually got a post-production model from Nikon. I was able to take it. I had it for all of two days um, and I was able to take it out with me and, um, and take some shots. So that should be ready to upload shortly. But if you do want kind of more information about a specific model, just have a look at our channel. We've, we've been very busy um, trying to put up as much content as possible for you to, to make life easier. And if you really, really get stuck, you can always email me. <laughs> If I don't answer you straight away, it's nothing personal. It's that I have a lot of emails. All right. Now, I will just talk about Becky's book nook. <laughs> I wanted to um, just mention we do stock books, as you probably know. And a few weeks ago, we were talking about the vintage books like Nick on a Celebration and the 100th Anniversary with Uli Koch. We also do these very highly rated guidebooks um, by David Bush. He has been, I think he's gone back to like D200 time was when he started writing these books. So, and they're quite um, sizable and they kind of cover pretty much every little menu setting and um, bits and pieces, much more comprehensive than the instruction manual. So if you have already got yourself a camera um, or you're planning to, and you think that you might need a little bit more help than a bunch of us just chatting away on YouTube, then do have a look at the books because sometimes a book will be super helpful. Um, John is deliberating about the 105 macro in the Z system. Yes. So the roadmap now, the roadmap has changed in the Z system a couple of times. Uh, I noticed that they've gone from a 60 mil macro to a 50 mil macro. Don't understand that one, but um, that's just on the latest version of it. The 105 macro is an S-line lens, that's on there. Uh, and obviously we were looking forward to the longer lenses. I think there's a 100 to 400 and a 200 to 600. I may be wrong, or 300 to 600. Did, did you see This is a tome, Ed. This is like, this is, the, this is a really big book. Um, it will answer all your questions. <laughs> Any questions that I can't answer, David Bush can certainly answer for you. Um, so the Z range of lenses is definitely expanding. And I would say if you're still not convinced about the Z system and you want more lenses, then that's a perfectly legitimate reason not to change over. But you do, with the FTZ, have access to all of the AFS lenses. Obviously, you can put on the AF and the manual focus lenses. So we're talking hundreds of lenses um, onto the Z system. The AF lenses, as I said before, manual focus. But to be honest, with focus peaking through the viewfinder, that's actually not the end of the world. I use that a lot with my manual focus lenses. Um, so now I'm just going to quickly rattle back through the comments in case I miss anyone. Banding in images you don't get with mechanical shutter. Um, yes, this is true. Also make sure that you're not using your electronic front shutter curtain uh, mark because the electronic front shutter curtain does not... Basically the way that the sensor records the image is line by line. And that means that if you've got a certain refresh rate of the lights, you will end up with banding in just the way that the light is recorded by the sensor. So if you turn your electronic front shutter curtain off, you should be able to fix that. Uh, hope that helps. So flicker control does not occur in silent mode, but the flash doesn't work. Yes, that's a good point. Can't use 
uh, flash doesn't work in silent mode. There's a couple of other things that don't work in silent mode. I think, uh, am I right in thinking focus peaking, not focus peaking, focus stacking doesn't work in silent mode as well. There's a few um, little extra things. Ah, oh, thank you, Alexander. <laughs> Soothing accent. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know about that. You should hear me laugh, like full belly laugh. It's not very soothing, but thank you very much. Sounds like a machine gun. Try using the F4 or F5. They don't have a shock absorber. This is true, but they also don't shoot 14 frames per second. You should hear the uh, the the D6 as it shoots. Also, the D5 is also machine gun like. The Z6. Oh yeah, Johan says Z6 firmware 3.1 XQD still works 100%. Yeah. We've got, actually, we don't have CF Express cards in our demo cameras and we've got the latest firmware, so I haven't yet seen that to be an issue. Not sure uh, where that came from, that the CF Express card compatibility wouldn't work, so uh, I don't know. D -d 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 After D850, Nikon cut out key customization options. Okay, D850 is instant switching custom AF on and AF mode set to function one and other buttons. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are also, it's a good point. I mean, they're not necessarily something that I particularly say I noticed or missed. Um, I know that there's, oh, focus stacking on the Z6 is silent. Thank you, Garrett, for answering that. Um, the Z6 demo is on the camera recording me, so I couldn't check it. Uh, so, Still not sure about... No, I read that one, sorry. The comments came through and moved me up a bit. So, function buttons and things like that. I mean, there is a certain amount of customization. Obviously, the Zs have function one and two at the front here, um, and you can customize your little back button here. If you need more customization, though, then I suppose you'd probably generally be looking at a bigger body anyway. Um, I think that there's ways around it, but but maybe a firmware update will give you what you're after, Woody. Uh, hi, D850 or secondhand D5 for general birds action, please? That's a great question, John. So I didn't talk about the D5s today. Um, for birds specifically, birds in flight and action, if you need the extra frames per second, then I would say the D5 is actually more cost effective. If you think you will be happy with seven frames per second, or you want to spend the extra and put the bigger battery and the grip and all that stuff on, um, then the D850 is fantastic. I find the D5, other than the D6, the D5 has the fastest autofocus system of any DSLR. Um, the D6 is mind-blowingly fast. I mean, it's like, instantaneous. And it's also tremendously customizable. The D5, less customizable, but there's still a lot in the D6 that was taken from the D5. So I would say look at the D5 as a serious option um, for action photography. That's, that is what that camera was made for. So that does make sense. Um, U options on the Z6 for customized settings. Yeah, I do love the U menus. Oh, that's a really good point, Nick. Ugh, I'm gonna try not to run out of time here. One of my pet peeves about the D850 is the custom banks. Um, it's got no user settings. All that means is you can take all of your settings that you like, including your preferred starting shutter speed and aperture and everything, and you can program it into U12, or if you've got a Z camera, U12 or 3. And it just means that you can start from the same point every time you pick up your camera. The D850 has custom settings banks, and once you change something in that, it's changed forever, and then you have to remember what you changed, and that's very, very frustrating. Um, so if you do like the sort of have everything in one place customization, and I do highly recommend that you use it if you've got one of these cameras, just program everything into one of these buttons at the top, um, and then you've just got a, a kind of clean slate starting point every time. I think for my D750, I had like portrait and landscape and those were oh, actually it was macro and landscape were my two kind of u1 and u2 so obviously for macro i'd have quite a wide aperture i'd have a reasonably sort of normal shutter speed and um i'd have a reasonably low iso my white balance was custom set everything was saved into u1 and then for landscape i would have a much smaller starting aperture usually a slower shutter speed electronic um Exposure delay, sorry, that's the word I'm looking for. Exposure delay was set on. All of that kind of stuff was saved into U2. So magically, I could just pick up my camera without having to think too much about where I was starting. It's just what kind of photography do I want to do today, this or this, and switch between one or the other. The Z cameras have those in, in three options, so you don't have to sort of pigeonhole your photography into two different types of customized options. Right. <laughs> 
Thank you very much, Brian. Oh, well, I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. I hope everybody is finding this super useful. The main advantage of the CF Express cards, yes, is the speed, absolutely. The CF Express cards are um, about between two and three and sometimes four times faster than the XQD cards. They are more expensive, um, I've found, but you know, you, you pay for the speed of the card. As I say, D850 doesn't yet have a firmware update to support CF Express cards. I imagine that will follow on in the not too distant future, but the Z cameras have it already. Uh, the D6 will have, well, has it on it when you actually buy one brand new. Um, and I guess cameras going forward that have XQD slots will all be also compatible with CF Express. Uh, set rear wheel on D850 to scroll between photo banks with red record button. Ooh. <laughs> Wow, that is quite, yeah, okay. I can see, I can see why you would do that. But yes, I think that we should have the U menus and the photo bank. I agree with you, Woody. Do the FD lenses give good quality images with the D780? And will there be too great a loss to use my DX lenses on the D780? Oh, thank you, William. <laughs> um, this is a very good question. And please do send your questions now before I sign off because I've got a couple of minutes left to, to answer questions. So... The AFD lenses will work with the D780. I wouldn't say that you will see as much difference with the 24 megapixel sensor as you would with D850 being 45 megapixels. Um, in certain situations, you will get more chromatic aberration, particularly if you're shooting kind of high contrast subjects or chrome surfaces. And it depends a lot from one lens to the next because I had an old little, like a 28 2.8D, 35 f2, um, had an old 85 1.8D at one point, and they all gave me this kind of slightly horrendous blue fringing on the D750 when shot wide open. If you stop them down a bit, you do get rid of that for the most part, so it does depend on how you're planning to use those lenses. But I would say if you're gonna use any camera with those lenses, then the 780 makes the most sense, or you know, something lower, slightly lower resolution, like a DF or a, a D4. Um, in terms of DX lenses on the D780, you are cropping yourself down to about just under 12 me megapixels, roughly. I think there's an exact, it's not half, it's slightly less than half, um, the megapixel count. So again, it's not the end of the world, but if you've got a DX body and you're not planning to change your lenses, I would stick with the DX range. In a couple of weeks, maybe next week, Let's see how we feel. Um, I will do something on DX cameras and on the D500 specifically. I've been asked a couple of times to talk about the D500 and the DX body, so I will do that. Uh, any news of an updated usable version of Nikon transfer software? Use it all the time when it works. I don't have a problem with it, Nick. <laughs> I've used it loads. But I will say this. If you do the firmware update and then you don't update the software, Usually that causes problems. I, the only time I've ever had a problem with the D850 and SnapBridge is when I did a firmware update on the camera and didn't update the app or vice versa. I updated the app and didn't check for an update on the camera. Same with the Z cameras. So just, just check. A DF would be lovely. It would. <laughs> DFs for anyone who's interested. It's one of my favorite cameras. Beautiful camera. Um, is a Nikon store exclusive now. We can't get them, which is very sad. But if you are hankering after a DF, you can buy one pretty inexpensively from the Nikon store. So there you go, Nikon, some free promotion for you. Um, but it is a wonderful camera and works really, really well with manual lenses. Right, I think, I think that pretty much covered everything. Any update on the webinar software for Mac? Oh, no, it's a good question. Uh, not yet, it's still in beta stages on Windows. Um, we are gonna actually download it and test it out probably next week at some point, and then I'll maybe, <laughs> maybe do a video, <laughs> see how I feel. Um, but no, not yet. Generally speaking, most of these kind of new beta software, including Canon's and Sony's um, streaming software, is all Windows-based, so I don't know if Nikon will necessarily be the uh, enterprising one and decide to also make it compatible for Mac, unfortunately. Honestly, I would maybe just stick with OBS. It's free, it works with uh, both Mac and PC, you just need a capture card, and they're quite inexpensive these days. The issue with AFD lenses with Z cameras, they manually focus. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned that at the beginning of the stream, like, a few times. Camera does not have driver for this. That's exactly right, Andy. Um, but we were talking about AFD lenses on the D780, which will be fine. You will be able to autofocus. That was in answer to William's question earlier. You can autofocus with your AFD lenses. Right, I'm done. <laughs> I need a coffee. <laughs> so, 
Um, please do feel free to drop comments uh, if you're watching this not live or after I've gone, that's totally fine. I will try and answer them. If I don't get to them, you can also just send me an email. Um, info at grazerwestminster.co.uk gets to me as does Becky at grazerwestminster.co.uk. I will always try and answer your questions as quickly as I can, but as I say, I do get a lot of emails. So if I don't answer you immediately, um, it's just because I'm going through the like 80 or 100 emails in my inbox. Um, I'm gonna love you and leave you and I will see you next Friday same time so please do a uh, bell icon and subscribe that one the other way around subscribe and then bell icon <laughs> and uh, then you'll know that I'm going live and if we upload videos in the meantime you also get notifications of those they tend to be a bit shorter I'm glad I could help um, and if you as I say if you need any other bits and pieces just let me know have a wonderful weekend everybody for those of you that are having a bank holiday weekend and I will see you next week <laughs>